<laughs> yep. Okay, cool. I'm going to share this for my page. So. Okay. Uh, welcome, Facebook. Um, we're live. Yeah, we with, are. Uh, Jessica, Jessica Sauer from Roots and Refuge Farm. So we're here at the hatchery. It's hatch day. Yeah. It's Monday. So look at some babies. Yes. Okay, cool. Here it is. Welcome to our hallway. It's, uh, it's a beautiful hallway. That's all I have to say about that hallway. <laughs> I came out of the yeah. I came out of the incubator room earlier. Yeah. And it was like oh, because it's so cool oh, yeah. in here, it, like, comparatively, yeah, it's so, like so warm and humid in there. You can't see the right off of here though is, is the incubators and it's eighty five degrees. Yeah. And, you know. It's like twenty degrees cooler yeah. in here than it is in there. <laughs> it's like wow, okay. So it's um, really cool. I love watching the incubators get loaded earlier. Oh today. yeah. Yeah, I saw yeah, them get it's, set. Uh, that's that's really pretty fun. Uh, so it happens all, of course, setting the incubators all happens the same as half day, 21 days. Yeah. Pretty much exactly. We started setting the, the incubators at 3 o'clock last night. So that's why we actually come in so early. So that's when, in order wow. to get all the chicks to hatch at the same time, we set three different times. Right. So they started at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's crazy. Yeah, I have my little 260 egg incubator. You know, the big incubator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's, a, that's very small, yeah. actually. Like, I got under, like, during our storage area, I've got like four of the whole baiters. Yeah. Like, you know, 40 eggs. Like, yeah. That's, that's where all of our Bela Felder lines came from. That's the ones so that I, cool. I just hatched at home. <laughs> that's really, really cool. Really so, cool. Yeah, we'd run those. We'd have three of those running the counter. Just, not very good at yeah. putting them all together. So. Well, I want to do like a watch party on this, and I'm not 100% sure how to do that, so I'm going to have to. Don't take, take do your time. Uh, I'm going to. Have your. Alright, guys. Oh, my gosh. You guys can hear the chicks. Cause it's... Yeah, should we look at them? Yeah. All the babies. We've I've... been here once. We've talked once to the chicks, so. Oh, yeah. Got over mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Overwhelmingness of it. I have come through and like been just they're so sweet. Yeah. They're so sweet. And they're so unique. Like you, you, they're between each breed, like they're so uniform, but then even different. Like, that's what I was actually like, saying in the video I was making earlier, like the variety from breed to breed is so cool. Even yeah. just like picking up like a cochin versus a top hat and yeah. just feeling the weight difference it's just really cool how big like they are when you, you've handled enough of the, the chicks you you can you really feel the, how healthy they are yeah. depending on their weight yes. like and so even as people fill orders and like you grab a bird and you you have an expectation of that and if, if they've lost too much moisture like in the hatching right. cycle then you know, that's not... You kind of know that something yeah. might not be right. So. Yeah, I've been really impressed with, like, the overall health oh, yeah. of them. I mean, they're just so, that's, so vibrant. That's what we do best. Yeah. So that's what our, our, our... We don't cut any corners there. Like, chick health is number one yeah. out of anything, so... I can tell. And just, like, I was noticing, like, the room where they're being sites, like, it's really warm in there, you know, yeah. because they're sitting around, and it's, like, little details like that. I was noticing yeah. the difference. I think it's really neat when you have breeds that do have variation in the colors, and they're not all exactly the same, like the Americanos. And the so, yeah, I was working at the, with the parent stock, and I was doing some selection. Yeah. And it's like, what do you, I'm trying to talk to, we have an intern, and I was like, trying to explain, like, what do you, when you're looking for this, like, it's up to so, there's so much, when you have a breed like a whitey, where they're right. not, yeah. sorry Randy, um, where there's not really, there's not a uniform color, there's not a pattern, like, what do you want, like, we're in charge of what this is going to look like, Yeah. you know, it's not just color wise, but, uh, you know, body shape, body type, like, they have beards, like this little guy's got a beard. Yeah. Um, you know, but not all of them do. Do you want a higher percentage of beards? Like, right. you know, it's, it's almost easier to do the standard breeds because you you know exactly what you want. What to expect. But so when you have, like, I want to keep colors, so I want to keep different 
colored parents. You yeah. know, because I love how the chicks are. I think for people who have small backyard swaps, having variety with oh, yeah. like that is a really cool thing. I know for, for us, like my kids love to name our chickens. Yeah. And so when we have several that look alike, like right now we have the Lucy's, like all our, like, <laughs> a bunch of red just comments or whatever, and there's all the Lucy's. And we used to have actually these potions um, that were these massive black potions, and our friend Daniel sings. Um, he's he's a yeah. musician, and he's got he's like a big guy that has a really big voice, and so we named all our black coaches the Daniels, and so like <laughs> we had the Daniels, and it was it was like really funny. I was noticing these coaches over there. Coaches are some of my favorite. I love the coaches. They're great moms too. Like yeah. I had a few broody ones that raised a lot of chicks. Nobody can sit on more eggs than a coach. I know. <laughs> so. We also had a female coach named Big Booty Judy <laughs> for that <laughs> reason. <laughs> But yeah, we like to have a variety. We like naming ours. Oh, is it this one that you're saying that you like? Yes. Look at that beard. <laughs> oh. Really cool. I like I like that the yeah, these are all hens, but the roosters have the, the black beards. Yeah, you know, that they're is so cool. dark and they're so at odds with the rest of their yeah. coloring. It's just I don't, I don't know. know. I think so. How many orders? Will you guys like um, so today, today? Today we'll do 370 orders. Wow. So individual, that's backyard customers. Block stuff. That's really, really cool. So um, we do we're Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's about the same. So. Yeah. Um, so, several orders. Yeah. I've got a block party yeah. going on here. So. Um, we put grow gel uh, in with okay. all of our boxes, so it's just uh, it's like Jello. It's just hydration supplements. Got probiotics. Yeah, something to yeah. So it's got good stuff for them. Helps jumpstart the idea. I guess. Goes in every order. And you said y'all start doing banners. Uh, not till April. So in we April, got a, yeah. I got a month. We're we're collecting our eggs this week. It'll be our first egg collection. That's really cool. So we'll. Phantoms are, phantoms in the small breeds need the warm weather. They, they right. don't tolerate cold weather. So. so I'll show you one of my favorite things yeah. so far. That I was, we spent a while in here earlier and I got to like look at every single old chick breed. Um, and I figured out that Jeremiah was really smart flying me up here instead of driving because <laughs> No, he's not ready to brew chicks quite yet. <laughs> so, so I think this is probably my favorite thing going on in here right now. It's all these tiny little, <laughs> little caps on their heads. But you look at, I mean, they're super active. Oh I mean, my goodness, I know they're really vibrant. I know they're pecking at my fingers. It was funny because I was, I had my camera, which my vlog setup has like the big microphone. And I would come and peek over the edge, and then I would have like a hundred little faces looking up at my camera. <laughs> yeah, they're so alert and vibrant. Even more so now, I think, than this morning, because they were so, you know, they were yeah. fresher this morning, and this, as the days progress, they're like. It's a it's a lot of work hatching, like to get themselves out of the shell. So like, they need almost a full day to yeah. to kind of recover, like just. It's like being born, you know? Yeah. Like, you're not, yeah, they exactly. Just, they just sleep. You know? and exactly. So. So it turns out Tom's like the chicken whispered. Earlier, I can't do it. He had one like asleep. Put him upside head. down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that little guy. They'll get there. You just gotta. There he goes. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Yeah, Polish is prob Polish Polish is probably little... aren't the best breed to like do this yeah. with. They're kind of high strung. But they, they, you know, like oh. a they're like a little puppy dog. Oh, they just yeah. need a belly rub. Yeah, they do. They love a belly rub. Oh, it's okay. You don't. You don't. I mean, people don't think of chickens as like overly friendly, but they're friendly like your cat is friendly. Oh, like, yeah, they're they can curious. totally be socialized. And they, they want to know what you're doing. 
and some of them like being held and some don't. Yeah, and, it's personality yeah. for sure. I have, I have one chicken right now. Um, she's in Orpington and she will just come get right in your space. Like she'll hop right into your lap. And chickens remember, chickens have a memory. They can remember about 35 individual people. Really? Like they know, if, if you're going into the coop, they know who you are. Like they know who your kids are. Like they know if you're danger or not danger. Like right. um, they can remember about a hundred other chickens. Really? So that's their that's their, their, their capacity. social capacity. You know. Look at this. They're so cute. Oh, they're so cute. I did see the video where they peep the for the they take the adult bird and they draw a line in the in front yeah. of it. And it mesmerizes it or something, yeah, hypnotizes I've, it. I, I've I never should try tried that. It, yeah. There was, what was the other one that I saw that I really liked? Was it, it had, it had mascara looking on. They, they had like really, was it the butterfly? The butterfly? Um, no. Oh, it was these. It was the. The game. Yeah, the game and the phoenix. Yeah, so like, they look really similar. Yeah. Um, their and little the silver leghorns, you put those three together and those are some tough ones yeah. to tell apart. Look at their little mascara. So Eyeliner. that's a very chip, little, like, chipmunk Yeah, the pattern. chipmunk pattern. Yep. And that comes out in the Americanas and yep. stuff sometimes. Yep. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. I could seriously just spend all day. These are probably some of the prettiest, the, the blue lace red wine dots. But this... all, all around, like they have absolutely fantastic I like Wyandots a lot too. Yeah. I've, I've had really good luck with these. This is actually on my list. We're getting some of these this year and I'm really excited about it. They're really pretty. Look at that. Like, yeah. The, the difference is in yeah. like, They're just got a little more red, a little more blue. But yeah, they're really like, beautiful. I'm interested to see what that guy Yeah. And I love feathered legs too. So, I, I love the ones that have feathered legs. I was like searching those out earlier. They're not good for bugs. Yeah. They don't like wet. wet yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When I had my coat in, we learned that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a problem. <laughs> I like a mesmerized. Which breeds did you select? Do you remember? Um. <laughs> there was a long list. There was a lot of breeds. I got a lot of breeds. I got like a couple of several different kinds because of the whole naming thing. Like my kids yeah. love to name our animals, and so I wanted to be able to tell them apart. Um, but I know I'm doing the white Morans. That was one of the breeds that I was really excited to get. And then the um, blue lace red wine dot, we got some of those. Um, but I mean, a lot of the kind of like speckled Sussex and Australorps and Orpingtons, we got a lot of just one or two that would be distinctive birds that we could name. Because we just do, we do have just a backyard flock, you know, and so it's getting pretty yeah. big, <laughs> actually. <laughs> it's gonna be a big backyard flock right now. But, uh, but yeah, we got a really good mix. I uh, I really go back and forth between like I'll, I'll, I'll take a really big mix of stuff and like really rare stuff too, like and, and then they just don't lay all that yeah. well. And so eventually I'm just like, I wish. You. Then I'll yeah. go and just get like layers. Yeah. And then so then I have all these layers and I'm like, kind of wish we had a you like she had some bird, right? going around. So then I just I'm always back and forth. Yeah. Like. Um, we did get some of the whiting. The whiting. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we did the green and the blue. So that's kind of cool. Oh. I, yeah, that's one of my my kind of pet projects. So I'm gonna make the green darker. Darker. I want a darker darker green. So that's. Yeah, that's. It's really interesting when you get into the genetics and the yeah. recessive and dominant traits of breeding them. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited about the whitings. I've never had those before. That's a breed I've never had. And then I, we did get some crusty cream white ones as well. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. They're yeah. Uh, currently on. Yeah. <laughs> They're 
Um, that was one same thing. I I bought eggs and raised them at home. I had them raised them at home, and then I started building our flocks with yeah. stuff that I had in the incubators in my house, like on the street counter. So that's so cool. That's how I don't like to bring stuff like into our barn. Like right. I, and yes, I know where the breeders come from. All NPI certified, like, but. Right. the value of having the barn, like I need an extra right. step. Right. So it's like two years before we start a breed, before we can even get thinking about offering it. Like, wow. To a number that anybody's doing that. Same with like the lavenders. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're saying that there are only, your lavender cloth is like... 30, 25 hens maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really small. That's really... Um, if we get to the barn, so yeah. like... Go, that's it like yeah <laughs> well that's the thing yeah <laughs> i mean truly it's crazy because i did have the mindset before that and i met you guys personally that this was a massive operation yeah and so coming in here i mean this is impressive i mean this is a lot of chickens but then looking it's like oh this is the room where all the shit happens like, right here that's our those are those orders for today like getting ready to go on the truck like once you figure out the logistics of it, like it's, right. it's very, very doable. Like, yeah. um, there have been a really uh, surge into kind of pop-up hatcheries yeah. like in the last five years. Um, that's awesome yeah. for, for the industry. Like, I love that people are this excited about backyard poultry. Yeah. That even like they're willing to do it. Like that, right. you're preserving something. Like, yeah. You're in charge of a genetic line. That like, it is it's yours after five after like five years. That's that's your, your line. Now, so. Yeah, it is a lot of, of work. Yeah, I did. I did at one point fancy myself. You know, I thought I was going to breed chickens, and I <laughs> invested. I got some really good birds, and uh, after about two years of really working on it, I was like. I'm gonna buy chickens <laughs> from somebody else who's doing all this work, and I'm yeah. gonna plant a garden. <laughs> so I like, yeah, you know, I, I don't to do it excellently. Yeah, and that's like I feel like that's like where I'm at. I I have a, a legacy here, like yeah. that I like in 20 years, like I'm, I'm gonna hand this off to my kids. Hopefully, like like I want them to be able to see what we did. Like yeah, this is what we got. Like this is where we're at. Like. Some of the rare breeds, like just not a change, is, is a positive thing. Yeah. Like, but some other things, like you need to Developing change. New you know, you need to continue to grow. Or, uh, I've, I've been impressed because I've been here, and it's like you and Bud both. Like y'all, y'all just they pop off chicken facts. Like they're yeah. like, oh yeah, this is supposed to have this comb, and this is supposed, and it's just like they're just going through this. Uh, database of like random this comb this feathering this this like all of these yeah. things and it's just it's there I'm like <laughs> and I forget a lot I, I don't I don't retain things yeah. I read and go that that's really cool so it has to like yeah this is like prompt me yeah like and then I, I remember that I yeah. know that I know. I'm that way with like tomato plants. Like I'll start talking about varieties and people are like, where, how do you have all this? I'm like, I don't know. I can't remember what I went in Walmart for. Like, I can tell you this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> the things you remember about what you're passionate about. Yeah. I guess it's, it's, it's really neat. I don't know. It's really unique. Like, I would, I've, I've been in a number of other hatcheries and seen how they've done this stuff. And we're, we do it our way. It's, yeah. Well, it's working. It's the best way. Working. <laughs> it's definitely working. Yep. Really cool. Healthy chicks, that's number one. Healthy chicks. Yeah. What's your favorite part so far today? Well, I mean, seeing all the fluffy babies has been pretty awesome. You know what I really, really like? I love the sound. Like, <laughs> everywhere, like, all the peeping constantly. I was trying to, like, get a good video earlier, just the sound, because it's just... I mean, it's just so much. It I mean, just, just stop and listen. It's like, that's so much life. But I, I do, I really like seeing that you guys are a family doing this, like the kids were dropped off earlier. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like, it's so, it's what it is. I just like to see that when your girls were in here earlier and I was um, hanging out with Nola and she's petting the chicks and she's going and just so comfortable and like she, she picked one of them up and turned it over and just started rubbing its <laughs> belly. It was like, what a cool childhood. And I think people watch that with my kids and seeing my boys like, I mean, my, my four-year-old's pruning 
pruning plants, yeah. you know, like, and he can do that because he's grown up in it. And watching her, I was like, this is really cool. Well, that's like, you know, my wife and I, our, our mindset, you get to include them. Yeah. Things. Like, you want them to be interested, you want them to do something, like, they well, gotta be able to, to help see you. dad like, and grandpa yeah. at work, you know, like. So, like, you know, you know, yeah, they're not, like, like you can't put them to work, but, like, they right. want to be there, they want to spend time with you, like. And it's, I mean, you've got an environment where they can experience it. I just thought it was really, really cool, like, to, to watch them be involved. And it's just really awesome. I'm so glad to get to see it. Yeah, that's us. Uh, hanging out. <laughs> Petting chickens. Petting chickens. <laughs> You're the professional chicken petter. Yeah. Oh, she's so cute with her little one finger on the side. Yes. Oh, no, I just love it. Oh, look at this little guy. He's so like, hey. He literally just right. had his little peek out. To be all by himself. Yeah. Oh, somebody's seen me laughing. Nobody. We, uh, if it doesn't, if this is left, then it's going to the barn. I have. I start chicks every week, so. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, you can look at him, I don't care, but he's kind of lonely in there. Even, like, even, like, we had two lavenders last week, I have one this week, like, yeah. I'll, those are go to our breeder flocks, so we have more next year. Like, yeah. That's building it up. Yeah, somebody, so. somebody asked, I'm doing a watch party on my Facebook, and somebody asked, I wonder, uh, Sarah Nixon said, I wonder if it's as loud in person as the mic makes it seem. It's really loud. Like, it's just <laughs> this well, resounding chirping. Yeah. Well, if you see the guys, they all have headsets, headsets on. on. Yeah. Because I think they hear it in their sleep. Yeah, probably. I imagine. It's just a lot. <laughs> I like I like the ones that have really like distinct faces, like this white face, black Spanish. Their fa like the faces that they make is like so much sass. And then when they get old, the the little ones don't have feathers on their face. They have those white, pasty, long, yeah. droopy faces, and they're just so different than anything else. Yeah, these are neat too. I was noticing these earlier, and I've had these before. The golden, the gold wine knots. Those are some really unique looking chicks. Yeah. Like, they're just really striking. Then these Phoenix. Oh, yeah. I saw the Phoenix. They Straight have, lines. They have those long tails. Oh, yeah. They were a Japanese breed That's kept so by cool. emperors. And they would have like 20 foot long tails. I think these may be my favorite chicks. The Polish. Yeah, I was noticing them over there. They're just their little cat. I like all of them, but the black Polish with their white cat are just stinking adorable. And the coach, oh my goodness, I just can so much. You know, change your order now. Everybody, I know, I'm going to be like looking at my order. Though. <laughs> I think it's like looking at the catalog versus like looking at the chick, like that's going to... Oh, well, I know that like in the past where I've ordered chicks before, like you go through and then, but when they come and you open up that box, it's like, you just cannot, they're egg size. That's what I always say. These are egg sized little animals. Like, they're so sweet. The cream leg bar. Oh, yeah. You can, it's just got the faintest little crest. Yeah. The, the, this is a rooster, so the roosters have very small crests. Yeah. Auto sexy. Very, very cute. This, I think, today one of uh, one of my favorites that I've seen have been the coaching babies. Look how feathered those legs are. And this is going to be a big rooster, like. I mean, yeah, this will be, be a good-sized bird. I 
the blue ones. The blue ones are pretty, so pretty. The blues are a little bit smaller than the, the buffs. Really? I think, as far as our ours go. But. Yeah. That's a buff. The Brahmas will get there. They take a little bit longer to, to grow. Uh, do they have the most feathery legs? Um, no, the, the Cochins are profusely feathered. The Brahmas yeah. are a light feather. Right, uh, yeah, I thought the Cochins were probably the heaviest feathered of the bigger breeds, of the, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I know some of the little, like, Sultans have really feathered legs, and, yeah, like, they're, younger breeds. The Sultans, like... But they're so small. They're pretty small, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, birds did you say were in here? Um, there's about 75,000. So today, we have today. Today? So. That is so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, when somebody's like, is it really that loud? 75,000. <laughs> 75,000 little bitty. That's a lot of, that's a lot of chirping. <laughs> but, you know, it's not, you can, you can absolutely tell when a chick is stressed. Like, it becomes obnoxiously yeah. loud. Um, and this is a very, that's, yeah, Comfortable, this is like normal. Like, you know, just little peeping. Um, there's just a lot of them. Well, I noticed, like, you know, you pick some of them up, and they're like, and they kinda, ah, like you know, yeah. they kind of, like, panic, but it's a very different sound. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
He ordered chicks and they called me. Nice. <laughs> They're like, McMurray Hatchery has chicks at the post office. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's backwards. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll be there in an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really awesome. I, I think I could spend hours just going through to each one. Just, like, just picking each one out. Imagine if you got to pick your own order. It would take you hours. I know. Yeah, if I had to go through and like pick which ones I was going to take home, I think I would just be a mess. It would be really bad. I literally already thought about, like, I wonder if I could keep a chick alive on an airplane on the way home, and I was like, that would be irresponsible if the chicken said that could nail them to you like they do it to everybody else. <laughs> Jeremiah will say, your chickens are coming in April. I know, right? <laughs> Alright, well, I really like the silver. Oh. I like it when their face is just like so, uh, I don't know, they seem so sassy sometimes. They have attitude. Yeah. Been a lot of so cute. A lot of so cute, yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of that. Thank you. I've been you know, trying to working on your you moisturizer. <laughs> I assume they're talking about me. <laughs> what is the biggest breed we sell? Um, probably the, well, the Bela Felder now. Um, Are they really big? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I got, I'm getting some of those. I'm getting uh, some of those. The Brahmas. Light Brahmas, or are a little bit bigger than uh, dark Brahmas, which are a little bit bigger than the buff Brahmas. The Cochins, the buff Cochins are probably bigger than the darker or the buff Brahmas. There's those chicken facts. It's yeah. <laughs> There's the database. Well, we just, have to. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, if you go by strictly size, or you want to go by weight, see, because there are, I mean, some, like a dark Cornish is a very small bird. Right. But they're extremely dense. Um, you know, where the buff coachins are, you know, they're alright, they're 10, 11 pounds. But they look so yeah. massive, you know. Um, the Langshins are super tall. Like, yeah. they're very stately. Um, you know, they're, they're not quite a seal height, but yeah. they're super tall. So they just look bigger. So. Someone wants to know about the crevicores. Do you want to? Yeah, you want to show them those so the, and the talk about what we did? Hearts. City of Broken Hearts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the Crevacours, our friends. So we were we were really struggling, um, even keeping this breed alive. And, I mean, look to me, looking in this and seeing this many and this. Um, Healthy birds is, a, is an accomplishment. That's a, a huge accomplishment. Um, we worked with the Livestock Conservancy and with uh, Jeanette Berenger. We worked with Pivot Hatchery. Um, we worked with Dr. Tom Whiting out of Colorado. And we're really adding up, everyone is having the same problem. Uh, the, you know, they were so weak. Um, not only would it, they not hatch, they wouldn't survive. They wouldn't survive as chicks, they wouldn't survive as adults. So we're really almost on the period of extinction like in the United States with these birds. So um, with our powers combined, we were able to basically resurrect this as a, as a breed, as a, um, a viable option to, to even be able to grow or, you know, to, ha to have for, for people outside of, outside of us, outside of the three of us. So um, we, you know, we have... I think we personally have the largest breeding flock of crevicores, you know, for sure in the United States. Um, you know, anywhere outside of probably England, 
or maybe France, then, you know, top three in the world. Like, and that, we have maybe 100, so. Uh, somebody asked, what's the rarest one that you, you carry on this watch party? Uh, right now is the red caps. Um, the red I'm working on, on trying to preserve that kind of in the same way. We're working with breeders in, in England, so mm -hmm. later this Hopefully this month, if not next month, we're going to start importing some eggs and be able to, to diversify our bloodline. Yeah. Um, the Derbyshire Red Cap Culture Breeder Club. And we're going to go visit them. And we're going to go visit them. Wow. So we're going to, we're going to England. So come to England. <laughs> <laughs> In November and December. You can still sign up. You can sign up. And you get to come with me and Bud with all of our poultry knowledge. And... Uh, we're going to tour, we're going to do poultry tours, we're going to go to the Great Britain poultry show. Show. That's really cool. And, uh, and then we're going to do some touristy stuff too. That's really awesome. Okay, so someone, um, is there any one breed that's quieter than the others? Like roosters or just, uh, you got to be a little more specific. Like hens, hens in general. Are quiet. They don't yeah. really make any noise. Um, Roosters. Unless a rooster's giving them unwanted affection, <laughs> and I have heard a hen get pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or lay, uh, like some of them lay an egg, and they're and the you, same you're song like, they're people to let you know. <laughs> walking, you know, yeah. you think something's attacking them. Um, there is, I know the opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> there is a long crower. That, what is that? It's a breed of chickens that crows a long time. I, I think it's like a minute. Really? It's a... That's cool. That's a long crower. Look that one up. Yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> Got some yeah, irritated I found, neighbors? <laughs> I found that, like, my roosters it being loud was really, like, personality. It really wasn't yeah, the breed. I, I've had some that, like, would not stop, and then some that just hardly ever do. Yeah, I've got some, some bannies that yeah. are, are constantly crowing. Um, I have coachings that, that don't really crow. Like, yeah. My cousins but, didn't crow all the time, but when they did, it was like majestic. Yeah. It was just this big belting out thing. But yeah, it's been really personality. So yeah, I mean that's, and I tell people when they ask for like the friendliest birds, like I'll, I can give you generally, yeah. this is, this is a friendly bird, we'll bring a breed, but. That's your next question. Each, each chicken has got <laughs> its own. I could, you're going to go, well, that Millie Fleur was the worst. You know, we're yeah. aggressive rooster, and the next person's like, well, they used to ride on my kids' handlebars. Like, yeah. You know, that's, I, that's been the same thing. I've had my nicest rooster was a Lavender Orpington. My meanest roosters were Lavender Orpington. Yeah. So it, <laughs> it just went by one. Uh, somebody asked about, okay, what are the best breeds for cold? Um, big breeds, feathered breeds, um, Wyandots, Brahmas. Um, I'm going to get, so on my to-get list is the Icelandic breeds. That one I'm really, really interested yeah. in. So oh, that, you had one, didn't you? That's a land Icelandic? race. Icelandic? No, like actually, those? I haven't. I haven't had Icelandic, but I know some people who've kept them, yeah. They've oh. been basically isolated on, on Iceland for, since the Vikings were there. Wow. And so it's like this really... Cold hardy, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm really interested in those. Those would be a good one for anything cold. But it's not like cold. Every version of cold is different. We're in Iowa. Like, it could yeah. be 20 below. It could be, you know, nothing with big, large combs. That's that's about it. Like, a turkey is a super cold-hardy breed. Um, really? They don't have feathers on their neck. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, that's and it cool. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, they're just big-bodied animals. Right. Um, keep them out of the out of wind, like, in a sheltered area and they don't really need anything like yeah um, a roof to sit on so they keep their feet flat and they'll sit on their feet and they'll pull the you know, blood out of their legs yeah. and they'll fall off. somebody asked um and about the temperature in here with them you know with these shelves not being heated and and truly like i mean it's pretty i could look yeah i don't know but but one thing that i was noticing like you can see there's a lot of chicks in here, and it's not, these are so shallow, and they're also getting moved so much, so they don't have an opportunity to keep up on one another, but they are close together. Yeah. And so if there are only a few, they put them, like, in a box inside yeah, we'll, here so they can stay we'll, warm. We'll put them in a smaller 
small potatoes. They need each other to stay warm, and that's right. part of our shipping minimum. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Is they, they, they need that body heat. Right. Um, we do put heat packs and stuff, but that's not enough for individual birds. I know. I did notice that you guys keep the room where they're being set and sorted way warmer than here, but I guess by the time they're in here, they flush out a lot. Like. Yeah, and they're. Um, you want to make sure they're dry. Right. And, and there's just more. Right. In here. Like it's. So they they generate heat, yeah. but you don't want them to like generate humidity, right? So it needs to stay a little bit more dry in it's here. Like, it's seventy five in here. Yeah. Like, yeah. In the in the summer it'll be a lot warmer. Right. Uh, this isn't an air conditioned space. Though. Um, that we do have vent fans that basically it's just like to keep the humidity down. It's a little bit different shipping too because. Um, in the summer, you know, they're, they're going to be hot to hot. Yeah. Like here, you don't want them to go hot to cold. Right. Because that will, you right. don't go outside sweating. Right. You, you'll, you'll catch them on them. Right. And it's the same with chickens. They, if they're putting off a lot of, you know, they exhale the uh, humidity through their breath. Like, they're So it's almost kind of acclimating them in here to go out so, to be chipped. So, like, they go from the really warm space to, like, the medium one and then yeah. outside. That's really interesting. So, Things to, things to think about. Yeah, I got one. The best egg producer. Um, pearl white leghorns. <laughs> got dust all. I got dust all over my glasses. <laughs> um, red stars. Um, the black stars are, are right up there too. Uh, I like Sussex. Sussex are they are terrific egg layers. Whitey. The whiting blues, so they're, a, they're a commercial blue egg layer. They're going to lay eggs like a lake gonna. And the greens. And the I'm greens. excited about that. I'm getting it. That's oh. on my list. Um, someone asked, how can you tell a rooster from a hen when they're so young? We have professional sexes. That's their job, and they come here, and that's basically all they do. Cause they, you're looking at the cloacal of the vent, and you're looking for the, the rooster parts. Yeah. Not, that's it. And it's not very, it's extremely difficult. Yeah. Um, very time consuming. So yeah, I've watched, I've watched videos and tried to do it, and I've been like, ah, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait a few weeks. You'll get some different feathers. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> so. I had to uh, write a letter uh, to the government basically explaining, like, what sex scene is. And, and it's like, I had, I, I had to cite some sources. And so, like, the one I found that I really like is, they compare chicken sexing to to master chess players. Wow! Um, just because it's not what you can see, it's like what you what you're feeling. Like it's, right. it's like the intuition of knowing the the chicken sexing parts is like knowing of other chess players. Like and it's like God, that's cool. Yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> so. um, Someone said, what's the best breed for newbies? We're actually going to do a video, like, going over this. But, you know, I mean, I, you can answer this. But we're going to do a video, like, for you guys to have a reference talking about the best breed for all these different things. I mean, there isn't a long one. I mean, you could get an assortment. Get, yeah. Get some variety. And learn with what you like. where you are. Like, there are yeah. a lot of factors that are going to... Where are you? Don't, <laughs> don't get the rarest of rare. Like they're rare and exotic for reasons, and like that's <laughs> that's part of it is hard to keep yeah. and hard to keep alive. Like and so right, they're more fragile. Get the heavy ones. Yeah, the heavy, <laughs> the heavy breeds. That's what I usually tell people when they're first getting started with their first chickens. I'm like the heavy breeds are kind of forgiving because they do stay warmer, easier, yeah. and different stuff like that. Yeah. They also kind of hold their own, I think, against predators maybe a yeah. little bit more, yeah. uh, rather than a, a lot, little fragile. A lot ones. harder to get a coach into a fence. Than yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. I don't see. Any. You don't see a hawk taking off with a brown one. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I think that was the last question that I saw on here. Someone said they just placed an order yesterday, so it's good. They coming today. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, someone else said the best chicken for any chicken owner. I think that's probably the really chicken where you are. Um, I know that I started out, my, my getting chicken story is the reason why I got vetoed for bringing animals home on the farm. Like, I had Jeremiah now holds veto power because <laughs> I had to have chickens. And, like, I just 
went and bought a bunch. We didn't have, we didn't have the place for them, but we had them. Uh, <laughs> you know, appro appropriate housing is like, important. It makes it so much easier. Like you can struggle with chickens, like, but if you have a like set up for them, yeah. It's uh, five minutes a day. Right? And brooding them well, you know, like when yeah. you're getting chicks, like I've talked to people who have been like, I lost my baby chicks, but they didn't have feet on them or whatever, you know. I mean, there's just some different things that you have to. My brother, like my brother, and like, he doesn't put heat on their chickens. And it's like, well, I lost half of them. It's like, well, what? <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably had a strong half yeah. left. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even understand how they like they lit like they like they squash the other ones. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> like so I don't. People do it different. Everyone does yeah. something differently, and you have different varying success rates. We like the heat fights. Yeah, those are super yeah, nice. Yeah, that's what super we nice. like. Whatever they are, we got them. Someone wants to know what's the secret of keeping Polish. They're struggling with keeping Polish alive. When I know, I'll let you know. Uh, Is that why they're Polish rare? Are, Polish are very hard. Um, they're they're very small, and so they hatch small. Polish lay smaller eggs. Um, sexing Polish is hard on, on Polish because it's hard to, to see that cloacal opening on small breeds. That's the reason we don't sex bands at all. Yeah. Because you're going to lose more of them sexing them than you would if you just got straight Right. Um, Polish aren't a whole lot bigger. Uh, high straight run. Uh, it's easier on the bird. Uh, right. Polish, uh, there's, there are a number of breeds that are, are tough to start. And it doesn't matter if you ship them or if I take them to the barn. Right. Like I know we we have the same success rate shipping chickens as I do taking them to the barn. Like that, that tells me like that's right. pretty easy. Like, Man, that it's not necessarily about it is some about handling like we can't control the post office i know exactly what it is right but um you know, the negligence on one part or the other i won't i won't back to the post office because i love post office <laughs> yeah <laughs> but polish are hard that's that's all there there is to it. there's a number of breeds that are difficult and they're rare and exotic because of these reasons like yeah um my first chicken order i had sultans and <laughs> didn't lose a single one. I got them all the way to adulthood, ended up selling some of them as adults because I had too many roosters. Yeah. And I didn't know that that was hard. It was just beginner's luck. Yeah. It was like the first time I grew peppers. I was like yeah. covered up in peppers and then I struggled for like the next <laughs> few years, you know? But it just, yeah. I, I didn't know that they were hard. And I don't know, we probably made mistakes, but they were forgiving. And since then I've had a harder time with them. Yeah. Um, you know, I hatched some that I had a hard time with. It's just their yeah. fragile. Yep. If you can find like the most local source and pick them up, you're gonna you're gonna have a little bit better luck than, than you are shipping them. But like some point somebody got them from yeah. us. So yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where they, they all come from here. Yeah. At some point. Uh, all right. Do you have any more questions? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Do you hear the sound of chicks in your sleep at this point? <laughs> not, any, not anymore. Um, not anymore. You gotta get used to it. Yeah, you, you, or if you do, you just you just tune it out. Yeah. Like, maybe it's that background music that you don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's really awesome. So, well, I think that's it. You don't know it until you're in a quiet place and you're like, I'm here. <laughs> All right, I got a couple last ones before you go. Is it true Brahmas are? Fully feathered earlier than others, and what's the hardiest breed? So um, two questions. Yeah, I don't know that about Brahmas. Um, some of it, I, I honestly think there's a, a factor of, of temperature and acclimation and time of year of when a chicken feathers. Um, if, if they're able to be outside and, and active and, and like in the sunlight, I think they feather out faster. Um, I absolutely because if you're waiting for them to like feather out like in your basement then then it just seems like it takes a long time you start putting them outside where they're uh, they, I don't know get outside everyone needs to be outside well I've noticed that with my hands that raise chicks 
that yeah. they feather out faster and they're hardier earlier than yeah. the ones that I were raised I, in the I house. Did, I think that absolutely is yeah. a factor. Mm-hmm. So, um, what's the hardiest breed? I don't know. Um, Plymouth Rock. So it was a very generic. <laughs> But you can choose from like four or five colors. Yeah, there's like eight varieties of Plymouth Rocks, so uh, not the silver pencil rocks. Those are rare. Those stuff. are rare. <laughs> Those are, and they lay super late. I'm curious about that. Who lays earliest? Um, hybrids. Yeah. Leghorns. You know, uh, the red sex links, the, the pearl leghorns. The uh, Sussex are pretty early layers. The whitings are really early layers. I mean, you're talking. Pearl Leghorn is like 15 weeks. Oh, really? Wow. Like it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's My almost, Americana's always made me wait a long time. Yeah. Um, I mean, 18, 20 weeks yeah. is pretty typical for yeah. stuff. So, I mean, it can be up to 24 weeks. Like, if I you just, don't uh, have chickens laying, it's, all, it's so much longer. <laughs> like, if you, if you don't so currently have one. Whenever you already have a bunch of chickens, you get new chickens, you're like, oh, wow, well, this is supposed to be a new egg. It yeah. just surprises you. But when there's none, you're out there checking every day, like, what's um, your egg yet? Yeah, I like those silver penciled rocks, the Plymouth rocks. Mm-hmm. They're, they're extremely long. They're like 28 weeks. Wow. Like, that's that's uh, the rooster maturity level, like, yeah. basically. In the, I mean, it's a long time. That's interesting. I didn't know that. It's the database. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You just, I'm around chickens. A lot. A lot. A lot, a lot. Oh, somebody's. Um, oh, this is actually interesting. Christopher Burns asked a question, and we were actually talking about this this morning. What's the difference between Bard Rocks and Dominiques, or are they the same breed? Not the same breed. Um, there's two different colors. The Bard Rocks have a yellow skin and a single comb, and the Dominiques have a white skin. And a pea comb. Yeah, so you can tell their leg color um, will be different and yep. the comb. And you can mm-hmm. tell the comb from when they first hatched. We were looking at Dominique's this morning. They actually have a smooth comb when they're born because it turns into yep. a pea comb. So there's a lot of, like, so there's only, like, you know, there's the same color variations. You know, you can get a, a buck Plymouth Rock and get a buck Orpington. Like, Orpington is a breed and a type, you know, it's a body right. type, you know, that you're looking for. Um, the colors are basically the same, but it's a, it's a little thing. So it's the leg color, it's the skin color, it's the comb type. Like, that's the difference. Um, and if you're really good, the body type is different, too. Right. Um, you know, rocks oh. and Orpingtons are not. You know, rocks are going to be taller, um, broader. Orpingtons are going to be shorter, rounder. Like, right. And that stuff comes into play when you're like showing chickens and you're doing all that. Or if you're an enthusiast and you really want to stick with breed standards. But like for a lot of people that ask me, they're like, well, I just want backyard eggs. It yeah. really doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, like they're all heavy breeds. They're, a lot of them are really similar. But yeah. you do know them apart. Like I have Orpingtons that are just like so fluffy and fabulous. Yeah. And then your rocks are like really, like you said, they're real steady layers. You know, they're really solid. They're different. Yeah, they're just all different. <laughs> <laughs> and if you know them apart, you can name them. <laughs> that's, that's how you and you wanted to get into the master class of chickens, you have to be able to tell them apart by the egg color, too. Yeah. And that's its own, yeah. its own thing. Yeah. We'll just send them a poster. They'll figure yeah, that out. Yeah, a poster. That's what you have to have. Um, okay. I ordered six Jersey Giants and six Black Australians. How can I tell them apart? Did they look the same at this point? Yep. About four weeks. Nope. <laughs> you can wait. Tyra. <laughs> that is, uh, like, all right, I'll say that, uh, and, and this, specifically in our breeding flocks, if they're hens, they're going to be tough. Uh, there is a variation in the leg color, but they both have the slate or the dark legs. The, the Jersey Giants are going to have a, I'm going to get this wrong, white sole. And the black, nope, it's the other way around. They're going to have a yellow or a more yellow sole to their foot. And the Ostelorps are going to have a, a white or pink sole to their feet. So, otherwise, like, the, the Jersey Giants are supposed to be bigger. Yeah. Um, and I am really working diligently at that, but like mm-hmm. hen size right now is gonna be tough to just pick out six out of a, you know. Um, so. 
suggestions for good brewing hands? Um, check our website. We have a yeah. we have a graph or like a you can select for broodiness. For broodiness. And so that'll list them out for yeah. you. Um, Bantams, Cochins, uh, Silkies. Silkies. Bantams are some of the broodiest, for, like to the point that they don't lay eggs because they're just so broody. Yeah. They're always just sitting. So. Well, that's what we kept our Cochins for, was yeah. they, they lay less than they sat. And yeah. So we just let them be the moms. I've got some whitings that are pretty broody. Um, I had some wine dots that were really broody. Yeah. I don't know if that was common, but I had two that were broody. So we, we can generalize yeah. again, and uh, some of it's just going to depend on the head. Personality so. and stuff. So Orpingtons sometimes. Orpingtons, yeah. yeah. If you're going to let them be broody, then more than some, you know, yeah. if you're taking the eggs out all, just leave eggs in and then see who sits on them. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one that's fruity. Yeah. Well. All right. Cool. All right. Good talk. Yeah. All right. Good talk. <laughs>